back in 2017, 2016, specific group chat on Discord, and one of the members, you know, one of the big boys, he bought about 50 plus Bitcoin for about 600 something dollars. That's that's a good price. <laughs> that's a very good price. Between scams and just giving away and like all the, you know, the BS that happens in crypto when you first start. He goes, I had like almost nothing to show for it. I would have $32 million right now. Yeah, if he just <laughs> held on to it. If he just held on and done nothing in the span of what, eight years, give mm -hmm. or take, he would have had $32 million just by doing nothing. That's the beauty of setting and forgetting. That's not saying forgetting. That's old diamond hands. Hoddling. Hoddling. He misses chance, unfortunately. Welcome back to another week of your favorite crypto podcast. <laughs> Sometimes crypto. The unscripted crypto, crypto podcast. podcast. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> that might have been in sync. I don't think so. <laughs> but I heard you at the same uh, time. You heard, I heard you at the same time I heard myself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, me and William have this thing where we like syncing up sometimes. So uh, we're just we're just uh, on that on that wave. It's It's been a week. Yeah, it it usually is William. It usually is a week since since, since the last it's been a week, bro. Episode, but uh, I don't I don't know William. It's it seems a uh, rather uneventful. Yet yeah, obviously events are going down, but I didn't see anything dramatic. Okay, so do you want to do you want to start with crypto, or do you want to start with uh, more like shocking? Let's let's do shocking for retention. Reten All right, cool. This will be this <laughs> should be our, head, our 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 title, and I, we should we should do the thing. So I ha I didn't have a chance to uh, deep dive into this. It ju I just saw it today. I, I just read the headline, and this is the headline. Are you ready? Uh, I hope I am. All righty, a hacking group. USDOD claims to have stolen two point seven billion records of Americans personal information including their social security number and addresses from national public uh, data a background check platform every Americans the, the headline reads every American social security number um, address may have been stolen in the hack this is on Fox 11 Los Angeles on a tweet from Bitcoin news from August 14th today Wow that's that is shocking. Two point seven billion. That it's every American documents? that has lived in like the last fifty years. <laughs> it's everybody. That's everybody's everybody. compromised. What was the name of the company that comp got, got compromised? Um, the name of the company from National Public Data. Wow. So f I. I think it's funny that you mentioned this because uh, I saw some news article that I ended up skipping past it because I didn't think it would be relevant for today's <laughs> podcast. But um, it was talking about about like, if I recall correctly, about 113 um, legal firms, law firms have been mm -hmm. uh, had their their data compromised. Also, now I don't know if that's related to this or not. Uh. I don't know about that now. Yeah, I know it's what a what a mis mistake on my end for not for not taking note of that. I was like, nah, William's not gonna want to talk about hacking, and this isn't really crypto related, so why bring that up? But look at you, look at you, William, bringing in crypt uh, security related topics. Well, it is our, so the reason I also brought it up because this is technically um so a social security number for Americans is like their livelihood. Correct. Right? So, like, with the Social Security number leak, this is, like, this is you as a person. This is your number. So, it's kind of a big deal because now they can just create false information under whosoever identity they want. Yeah, legal. Yeah, legally, the whole Social Security number thing is just quite important. Right? Like, we're, we're not even so... Like, you're not supposed... I'm not supposed to give you my Social Security numbers in fear... Of like whatever, of like fraud. Yeah, <laughs> identity. Like you're theft. supposed to keep that tight to the vest. 
Which is crazy because we're supposed to be giving that out also to pretty... specific people. Like you're supposed to be giving it out to like specific entities and stuff. It's like crazy. I mean, at my old job, okay, we would have to ask. I f- okay, what's up? I no no continue continue. No, I was Sorry. Gonna say at my old job, we would have to ask um our merchants for their social to like find their information sometimes because it had to be provided. And it's kind of like this person gave out their social to some random dude on not even me like the original person like they interacted with that brought us their information to some random company who they trusted would give them a loan of some sort or advance them money yeah yeah but like okay when it comes to like organizations like that there's uh compliances that need to be met oh no i'm not saying that i'm just saying the person trusted enough that it wasn't a scam that's what i mean oh that it wasn't a scam (laughs) i'm not even saying (laughs) like that the the company like protected i'm saying like they trusted enough that Mm -hmm. it's not a scam yeah yeah but i guess the thing like it's literally asked so often that sometimes you kind of like f- not forget but you're a little loosey-goosey with yeah. it you're like uh yeah this this seems like an appropriate time to give it out yeah. <clears throat> but yeah a lot of people fall into into scams like that because of that like we use it so often so it kind of like lowers our our like perception of its importance yeah Oh, but I found the article that I was um, okay. reading earlier. Um, law firms hit with an average ransom demand of two point five million dollars. So this is ransomware attack. So not yeah, not compromised data like that. And since since two thousand eighteen, one hundred thirty eight legal firms across the globe have publicly confirmed confirmed publicly that they have been attacked uh, by ransomware attacks. Uh, which is affected 2.9 million records, uh, which is why I thought it was the same thing as what you're talking about, yeah. since it was very similar in number. Um, with 2023 seeing the highest number of attacks, 45. So, like, ransomware is up uh, in terms of activity when it comes to legal law, uh, legal firms, law firms. I mean, they hold a lot of private information. Not just private information. I mean, not even like, private, just like information in general. Like impor- important. Important information. High stakes. Yeah. So when it comes to law firms, like typically someone needs them. Like businesses need law uh, divisions in the, in the company to be able to operate. And if your law firm that you work with gets compromised, locked up, essentially making them incapable of providing uh, their services like your your legal department's down yeah so they will definitely be very like i want to say uh lucrative targets for the uh, hackers um so yeah yeah i'm not surprised that that we are seeing a grow a rising trend when it comes to law firm hacks i am with you it is so what remediation or do you, or you just you said you I just, just read the, I just read the headline the, man. I'm not gonna yeah, lie to you. I saw the headline yeah. like this is something that yeah, would be no, just no, like you. fun to bring up I have truly no no in-depth additional information, information on that no. that's the I most see. I got for you unfortunately well that's all good that's all good that's all good but yeah that was interesting um, uh just reading like the, we've had like mm-hmm. oh you're still reading it okay i'm just saying just reading like underneath the tweet like there's not much being said about it like it was just that like it's not as sh- like big news as i would assume it would be i see so you want some other shocking news sure uh this is actually bitcoin related that's good and Essentially, this guy uh, Eric uh, Bal- Balchunas. Eric Balch- Balchunas. Balchunas. Yes, Balchunas? that guy. Uh, yeah, he posted a tweet recently on X, uh, talking about ETFs, Bitcoin ETFs, mm-hmm. and how they are on, how they are on path to having more Bitcoin than Satoshi Nakamoto. Oh, I saw that, but not by him. Oh really? By someone else? Yeah, I saw that by uh, Marty Party. Okay, 
Yeah, but essentially, ETFs, Bitcoin ETFs are on the rise uh, in terms of like how much Bitcoin they're holding. BlackRock, uh, at the time this was posted, has 347,767 Bitcoin alone, making them the th world's third largest Bitcoin holder, yeah. right next to Binance and Satoshi. If we start adding up the other ones, Grayscale, um, uh, Fidelity, like they get really close. It's getting really close to, to the 1 million, 1.1 million marker yeah. that Satoshi has. Well, you want to, to add, not to add, but like a little sidebar to that would be, you know who holds all of that Bitcoin? What do you mean all that Bitcoin? So it's, it, you, you read that BlackRock holds 347,767. Uh-huh. They don't hold that Bitcoin. I mean, they hold that in sense of like it's theirs, but they're not custodying it. Coinbase is. Coinbase is the custodian of the And of Coinbase Bitcoin. is also the custodian for Fidelity. Coinbase is also oh, okay. the custodian for a few mm -hmm. others. So like Coinbase mm -hmm. is is in custody of almost that 1.1 1. 1 number. I see. Well, it's interestingly enough, um on this list of the top 11 Bitcoin holders in the world, Coinbase isn't even on it. Yeah. Because under their entity, like in terms of Coinbase themselves, they don't hold that, but they do hold close mm -hmm. to 1.1 million worth of Bitcoin for others. Yeah. Well, uh, can you uh, fix your mic? I'm hearing like a little buzzing noise. There, it's gone. Thank you. So it looks like the cable is like loosening up for some reason. It okay. could be like from pulling or whatever. Yeah, maybe. So. Okay, continuing on looking at the looking at this list some more, the U.S. government's number seven at two hundred thirteen thousand two hundred forty six Bitcoin, which they recently moved and we we talked about. They moved that another ten thousand today from Silk Road. Oh yeah, they just moved it. it hasn't been oh, sold Silk Road. They just moved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then number eight on this list is surprisingly. Uh, you want to take a guess, William? China. On who's number eight? It is China. I saw the list before. Guess. Oh, so that's, that's why. right. <laughs> also, I kind of figured it would be China because I think China confiscated a bunch of Bitcoin too. Yeah, so China has 190,000 oh, Bitcoin. Yeah, 190,000 Bitcoin. That's a lot of Bitcoin. A lot of Bitcoin. Which is interesting uh, when you see so many Chinese bans on Bitcoin mining. To add to that, China this year might be unbanning crypto. Like that, that's a rumor I saw really? it around. I saw around the Twitterverse that they might unban crypto and start getting that flowing because Russia just started to use crypto um, as a legal form of um, payments. Okay, not yeah. tender itself, and with breaks around, but they're starting to use it. Mm -hmm. like you, you can cancel out like payments with crypto, so they might start using that for China, like to, to trade with China as well, or just with the rest of the world. Okay. I see. Yeah, and with BRICS being a growing entity, that they would make sense for China. Correct to them to. So I will come back to that in a little bit uh, about China making stuff, making Bitcoin and crypto legal again. Mm -hmm. But I just want to stay on topic with the whole uh, like legal, like uh, financial entities yeah. and how much Bitcoin they have because I caught word. I mean, it's all over that Goldman Sachs right. just made a recent uh, disclosement. But not by choice. They have to Is disclose. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not by choice. They have to disclose every quarter where they're putting their money into assets since they are a publicly traded mm -hmm. company. Okay, so this is, this is money that Goldman Sachs is actually investing. Yeah, this itself, is their money, right? It's this not, it's not their clients' money that someone. Nah, this is them investing into. This is them. Okay. This is their. That was, that was the only thing that I wasn't sure about. Uh, okay, the, this is I'm their. Honest, they're yeah, like. To, if I'm not mistaken, this is what they're doing with their cash. Yeah. So Goldman Sachs has a whopping four hundred eighteen million dollars worth of Bitcoin ETF holdings. How much did you say? 
418 million. Jesus. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a crap. Ton. So, I'll Although they're obviously not directly uh, holding Bitcoin and custodying Bitcoin themselves, they're doing it through the whole ETF, which Wait. was something that we expected to happen. Yeah. Like part of the ETFs is that it would allow other financial institutions to invest and get some exposure into Bitcoin. Which is mad bullish. In terms of. Oh, that's a, yeah, in, super. In terms of an asset. bullish news. Mm hmm. Which at the same time, it does go back to what we mentioned a couple weeks back, which was um, the centralization of assets going to these ETF. Like the, what's the impact on the market as a whole and what impact does it have going forward? Yeah, that is I'm glad you bring that up because that's still a discussion that's still very relevant. And if not growing, actually, as um, as these ETFs uh, come around to being some of the largest Bitcoin holders. I mean, they already are some of the largest yeah. Bitcoin holders. But they're likely not going to go away anytime soon. So if anything, they'll grow. This will be, yeah, exactly. So um, this this will just be a growing concern. Yeah. As well, um, so much so that other like other entities are also still talking about whether ETFs growing are a good thing or a bad thing, yeah. because the debate stands stays with that about Bitcoin being made for the people. Um, some people even say that it shouldn't be f like this wouldn't be something that Satoshi envisioned. Yeah, like being a um, a asset implemented in the machine itself, mm -hmm. where you can use leverage and like mess around with it. Yeah, so like this whole Goldman Sachs investing, f having four hundred eighteen million dollars worth of Bitcoin is kind of crazy because like. Not too long ago, like about a year or two ago, they were against it 100%. So far as to saying that you should not invest in Bitcoin. Yeah. You should not be investing in Bitcoin. Well, on that same exact note, um, Morgan Stanley, it's it's another financial firm, a couple of weeks back announced that they were going to have their 15, I believe it was 15,000, like something for roughly around that nature. Their fifteen thousand advisors start um, pushing and promoting the um, ETFs themselves. Oh, okay, that's they, good. Because they weren't going after beforehand because of they were doing that whole process of that ninety day process of due diligence and everything else, earning the asset before offering it to others. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that also. How. There's like a, a bit of a cool down period before yeah. the like Salesforce actually ramps up. Exactly. And what? I don't know. I just think it's a very, very bullish news seeing these ETFs coming around. Bullish for price action, of course. Um, not so pleasant for the uh, Bitcoin like traditionalist. What do you mean? So like like I said, uh, Satoshi's original uh, vision of Bitcoin will be f by the people for the people yes. essentially, and not not his words, <laughs> uh, but that that was a vision. And Bitcoin being invested by or, or like mostly owned by large entities might be against that original vision. Yeah, 100%. But like then again, the whole uh, like the bidding war between the ETFs and being available for between all the uh, all the different uh, entities, financial institutions, mm -hmm. that means that it will be easier for it to to get some more exposure, liquidity. It does and make raising uh, price. crypto more liquid. Well, it makes Bitcoin more liquid. I'm not going to say crypto. It makes Bitcoin more mm. liquid. Yeah, Bitcoin and, and, and Ethereum. I d yeah. Even though the ETH ETFs hasn't, has been very uh, stagnant, is the word, it hasn't been doing much either up or down. And also, well, if, if to be fair, it's like tanked the ETH price for the most part. Yeah. Well, or ju just because the ETH of price has tanked. For the most part, better said. We know, we knew that there's going to be sell-offs early on, mm -hmm. uh, but 
those sell-offs are actually slowing down now. Yeah. So with with a slowing down yeah, of sell-offs, yeah, GBTC is um, uh, slowed down then, heavily as well. So that means it should be stabilizing and therefore uh, starting to get gain some like uh, support in that area. Um. Yeah, it's starting to do the same thing that Bitcoin did. It's starting to wait we off the selling pressure in in uh uh a four ETH. The only thing is, it's you have to sell people on ETH now. It was yeah, true that. Which maybe it's a maybe even though it's an easy sell for the most part, it should be an easier sell since people understand tech. But it may be just harder to sell them on tech that's Web three or on blockchain. If that makes sense. Yep, yeah, it does. It does make sense. Um, so then this whole like, I don't know, uh, when, when it comes to like the elections coming up, mm-hmm. uh, well, if we haven't talked about that either. Yeah. If, uh, the U S government decides to hold Bitcoin as a strategic reserve currency, which is yet to be proven. That by would, side. yeah, of course. Um, Trump mentioned it has Kamala been, probably won't, ex- won't, won't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, nonetheless, if that were to start, then there would just be a bidding war uh, between nation states. Yeah, uh, in terms of gathering uh, as much as possible, Germany will be real upset. Really upset. Yeah, Germany will be super pissed because they just sold fifty thousand Bitcoin two or three weeks ago. Yeah, Germany will be big <laughs> mad. I wouldn't blame them for being mad, but I mean, that's their fault. 100%. No one told them to sell. Nope. We'll probably see more as time progresses, more um, large institutions just slowly add to their bag of Bitcoin. If they don't have one, they'll just start buying Mm -hmm. some up. Um, The Japanese company MetaPlanet has uh added another like 50 bitcoin to their uh portfolio like in the last like week and a half two weeks yeah uh give me one minute sorry no no worries and also on that same though like institutions michael Saylor even mentioned that he's he can care less about what bitcoin's been doing since bitcoin's been very volatile lately and like big big drop off with the with the with the carry trade and Bitcoin being just yeah, Michael Saylor's. He's like, he like, said like at I'm this not point. selling. Like, I don't care about anything. What happens to price? My outlook for this is in years, not months. I can care less. Yeah, that's something that he actually talks about a lot um, when it comes to uh, the the because of its volatility, the potential of being priced out of any potential of any trade that you do end up taking. Yeah. He's like, it's just not worth it, especially when you're talking about the the whole thing with with him like having so much uh, in his reserves because he's not going to take small trades no well i mean i'm in it as i've spoken i'm in i'm in a specific group chat on discord and one of the members not one of the members one of the members like you know one of the big boys back in 2017 2016 he bought about 50 some 50 plus bitcoin for about 600 something dollars and that's that's a good price and between <laughs> very good price between scams and just giving away and like all the you know the bs that happens in crypto as 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 when you first start he goes i had like almost nothing to show for it he goes if i would have done one thing and one thing only i would have 32 million dollars right now yeah yeah if he just <laughs> held if on he just to held it. on and done nothing from in the span of what five years no uh eight years Give mm-hmm. or take, he would have had thirty-two million dollars just by doing nothing. Not selling, That's the not beauty. Buying, just holding and being like chilling. That's the beauty of setting and forgetting. Nah, that's not. The, that's not setting and forgetting. That's that is hold diamond hands. <laughs> Hodling. Hodling. Yeah. Which which? Well, he was. missed he. He misses chance, unfortunately. Well, he doesn't have thirty-two million, but I can. I, I'm pretty sure he's not doing bad either. 
maybe. I, I would assume uh, he has now, to be short for it. Okay, yeah, all he has to do now is uh to BTFD. What? BTFD? Uh, BTFD. Yeah. What the? What does I'll, that I'll mean? Give you, I'll, I'll give you a second. I'll give you a second for you know. <laughs> By the effing dude. Oh. I was trying to like, I was trying to go like get back in, back in the. I, I was like, what? <laughs> I'm no. like, what does this even no, mean? That, I saw that. I I saw that one today. I was like, that's kind of funny. Like, okay, so what, what is this gibberish, man? I got stopped okay, out so of a since, trade, which and then like the trade's now going back up. This is some bullshit. That, that does suck. That's unfortunate. Nah, I'm not getting back into the Solana though. I got to, I got into a Sui trade instead. We'll see what happens. I'm sorry. Okay, so aside, I'm sorry. since we're since we're talking about Bitcoin, um, we have some very interesting stuff going on now with when it comes to the miners. We, all miners. we saw a. Yeah, so we saw a dramatic pullback. Markets crashed mm-hmm. big time last Monday uh, because of the whole Japan thing. Um, and with that, miners completely dropped off uh, from mining. They're like, it's currently not worthwhile to be mining Bitcoin really? right now. And what they did, yeah. Um, it had an 8.5% drawdown. In mining? Yeah. What? I didn't know that. Yeah. So, so yeah, Bitcoin miners dropped eight point five percent. Um, starting back like in since July. Okay, crazy. Um, and yesterday, yeah, yesterday on mm-hmm. August thirteenth, the hash rate has reached a new all time high of six hundred twenty seven ex- uh, exa hashes. Mm-hmm. Meaning the miners have come back to work and started pushing out as much processing power as possible to try to get those block rewards. But um, question: If mining mm-hmm. dropped, right? How did it have such a fast like up up rate? Like how did it go up so fast in terms of the hash rate? So no, the hash rate dropped. Mm-hmm. Um, at some point as the miners were dropping okay and then in the same time like within a couple weeks we yeah a couple months they, weeks, they move they move together yeah i know mm-hmm. i know but I'm, what i'm saying is in a couple of weeks it reached a new all-time hash rate yes meaning more miners were got online in that time frame that then that were off correct jesus i okay that i was just trying i want to be clear that's what happened yeah so just just for reference, hash rates refers to like the amount of processing power that's used by the miners uh, to mint new blocks on the blockchain. Uh, and in doing so, they support the Bitcoin network and earn a small portion of Bitcoin rewards. Um, right now, it's what? 3.25? 3.12, 3.1, uh, 3. 1, yeah. 3.12, yeah. It was 6.25 before. Um so part of this had to do with the drop down to forty nine thousand dollars um last week but seeing how miners are back at it at full force well greater than full force yeah um that's uh that tends to be an indicator that the local bottom for bitcoin has been priced in really yeah because uh if miners are coming back, then they're like they're not worried about the price of Bitcoin dropping below um, somewhere that's uh, not affordable for them. Because miners tend to look into like the uh, into like further down the line, mm-hmm. S- yeah, and they would like to try to accumulate now as much as possible, uh, expecting to get the returns um, on the back end. Yeah. This is, uh- yeah, they're they're waiting on the price of it going up to pay off their debt to to their creditors and investors. Correct. <laughs> and stay afloat. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty much what happens. Oh snap! I, I I didn't know that they had such a large jump up in in hash rate. Yeah, well, they were it. down eight point five. Well, they I don't know how much up they were from where they were before like yeah but doesn't they matter. did drop 8.5 mm-hmm. yeah. but now they're at all-time highs yeah but if you're reaching all-time highs and your hash rate dropped and you had that means the, you had an increase just in mining 
mm-hmm. over what you had prior. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. Oh, snap a doodle doo. Yeah. So um, there's actually a uh, some quote that I have here from who you who we quoting. Uh, crypto quant. Okay, I feel like I've heard of him. Uh, I think it's like an entity. Yeah, no, I I, so, I said him, but like it. Yeah, uh, we may have seen uh, we may have seen a minor capitulation event last week as miner outflow spiked after price touches forty nine thousand dollars. So miners outflows, meaning miners are dropping off, and there's and then. They also said uh, Bitcoin daily miner outflows spiked to 19,000 Bitcoin uh, on August 5th with the highest level since March 18th. Okay, miner outflows, my bad. Uh, they're talking about uh, them selling off their Bitcoin yeah. to pay off the debts. But yeah, like I said, the uh, emergence of these Bitcoin miners coming back tends to indicate that local bottom has been uh what what's it called has taken place mm-hmm. yeah. that's i think is relatively bullish news i would say so if we have more miners so want to hear some more bullish news not bullish. i love bullish news i would say them. bullish in, in per in like a standalone a more so add perspective because i remember early on even i mentioned like we could be in a super cycle we can be in a left-hand translated cycle like we're just like an uptrend only because of the etf and all this you know shenanigans us breaking all-time high before happening and even ahead of that so where do you think we are compared to the other prior cycles um well do you in think terms we, of time yeah in terms of time do you think we're in the same st- spot as we would be in other years do you think we're ahead of that do you think we're behind um part of me wants to say ahead because we have broken all-time highs uh but bef- bef- we we, ro- we broke all-time highs before the halving and we stayed around those prices mm-hmm. um but then also part of me wants to say that we're like on time because of the specific conditions that we have uh, just leads to so much potential uptrend that uh, we can still see those price targets that we talked about of $120,000 of Bitcoin with not too much effort. Yeah. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to see exactly where we are right now relative to the rest of the cycle you can see my screen yeah i can see it so are we looking at price where is this price um i think this is a return on investment relative to like where the cycle is going i think this is day i think these are days I mean, it could be price i don't think it's price though no it's not price it's days since market cycle bottom okay I follow this and, graph now. And then this is the return on the investment. So we have the white okay, line. Which one's the or- huh? Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll just let you talk. Yeah. We have this. We have white line one, white line two, which you can't really see. But we do have cy- the first cycle, second, and the current one we're in. So starting point, this is where we are. Let me see if I can zoom in. Can you see me zooming in? Mm-hmm. Awesome. So this is currently where we are in the cycle. Relative to the other ones, we're kind of not really halfway. Ahead. We're just halfway into the cycle. We're not, we're not doing the only moment mm-hmm. we outperform yeah, we're, the we're cycle we're... relatively is here, where we had that seventy k peak. In my opinion, is probably where this is. I see. Interesting. Seventy k. We dip back down. We've been peaking again, and then we're here again on this upward trend again, where we meet the rest. From based on this like chart from this is an in- this is an interesting chart because it's it's tracking the ROI yeah of the market yeah okay Rel- if the, if we're you know look, looking at this chart and where we could be we still have we're still missing this massive uptrend or minimum we're missing to get to this point right here because this is cycle three where we got to seventeen thousand. 
then here was where we got to 63,000. What was it? Something like that? Yeah. So we're still missing the good spot, where, where, which would be around Six, here. Like 16, yeah, 60 some thousand. I don't remember. So right I now. would safely assume if this is 64,000, I'm assuming this is 100, and, 100 plus thousand easily. Well, we could kind of calculate that because ROI, okay. This is just return can on Can you zoom into the top? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you t- zoom in on the top left part of that chart where it says Bitcoin market cycle bottom? Here? ROI, yeah. ROI from last market cycle bottom, 3.867 mm-hmm. to peak. So like 3x, if, if, if I understand this correctly? From last market. Okay, yeah. So we're, okay. So no, yeah. That's just telling you exactly where we are right now. Yeah. Um, 3 point, yeah, 3.86. So then we could see up to 20. ROI from market bottom. Yeah. Of course. So th- this is from, I'm assuming this 3.8 is from that 17, I think it was what? The 17,000? 15,000? 16, let's say? How m- we did yeah, three times, like three times eight. 3.3? 3. 3, mm-hmm. uh, three times yeah. point eight from that 16. Yeah, that's relatively where we are. Yeah. yeah. I think it doubles from market bottom. Let's be clear here. Mm-hmm. I think it doubles, doubles that price. The f- doubles this yeah if it's 3.8 we'll probably do like seven eight well no william this chart's actually showing that it does way more than that oh i know what the chart's saying i'm saying what can relatively happen potentially but yeah, i'm saying like you I know see. safe bet safe bet mm-hmm. so i feel like that was That's an interesting I, I feel chart. like that puts in perfect i mean that was benjamin cowan's chart very big bitcoin maxi not Max. i'm not gonna say maxi very big bitcoin guy a little bit of maxi mm-hmm. but more a bitcoin guy I mean, his his D-Gen plays Ethereum, so what can I say? <laughs> his D-Gen plays Ethereum. I mean, who am I to talk, though? Dude, dude's doing something right. That's hilarious. Yeah, no, no facts. Factual. Yeah. He's saying we should, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin dominance should peak around 60%. Bitcoin dominance in September. A drop down comes, then alt season happens. And then it reverts back to Bitcoin dominance rising when we start to tip off. I just, I just, I just feel like yeah. carrying that chart. I feel like that was a very uh, perspective. I, I feel like that chart adds a lot of perspective. To what yeah, I think it does. Go. Yeah, it definitely does. Definitely does. Um, I'm so excited for this bull run. Like, this is funner than. <laughs> Personally, I think Bitcoin bull runs are funner than election years. Just because we just have so we just much happening. Be in both. It, it correct, but the the main difference between Bitcoin bull runs or Bitcoin cycles um, versus election cycles. Let's talk in cycles. Um, Bitcoin cycles tends to bring people together. Election I cycles. Say that. Tends I wouldn't separate. say that at all. <laughs> what do you mean, William? I don't agree with that statement at all. With them, Bitcoin anything? goes up, alts go up. Like even, even. If, I'm not saying that if you're not a big fan of Bitcoin. Like you want Bitcoin to go up. That's a convergence in ideal situations. I'm not. not that's not what I'm arguing. I'm arguing maxis arguing? don't. I'm. I'm saying maxis hate on um alts even more when Bitcoin goes up and alts are like doing what they're doing right now. Like they go, told you, you should never bought that shitty altcoin, mother garbage ass token you should just buy bitcoin da 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 da, da. which to be fair alter alts are, alts are destroyed alts are like dead <laughs> <laughs> like the, there's only like four alts alive. alive rest in peace rest in peace alts which ones are alive soul bnb ton those are those are two ton yeah I've heard something about Ton where they're releasing some type of new uh, form for new way of people earning the token. Yeah. Yeah. But like, there's not many alts that are near prior all time highs or have surpassed. Mm-hmm. So, on is near all time high, BNB past all time high. Now, you know, that's what, that's what I mean. So, 
Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. They're, they were opening my door, and I don't know if they're going to come in or not. Mm-hmm. I actually got some food dropped off. I got some food dropped Who dropped off you off today. food? Oh, there's a guardian angel. Oh, is that Taco that's Bell? A, that's a, oh. No, it's a Jamaican patty. Oh, that's nice. That's fire. Yeah. It is fire. I was actually looking at one earlier today. I was like, I went to the, to the little uh, Jamaican spot. Uh, no, not Jamaican spot. It's one of those uh, food trucks that come like driving around. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like those those trucks that come around with food on the back of them. They're not actually like cooking the food fresh. They're just bringing it in from a some yeah. type of industrial cafeteria. 100%. They had Jamaican patties. I was like, should I get one? It's funny because I didn't say that to anybody. The Guardian Angel does new. Exactly, William. Hey, man, that works. So, on related, not bullish notes, but important n- important information. Uh, let me just get rid of this chart. Um, I'm looking for it on my thing. So, I have this. Where is it? Okay. I lost my PPI one. Are we going into PPI and CPI? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Perfect. If I find the PPI, I don't find it. <laughs> you don't find it? No. I had it. I don't know where it is now. Uh, no one cares about producers anyways. Oh, There's I, not I, that many I producers here it. in the United I, States. I, <laughs> I mean, they are in the United States. That's what we care. I'm saying there's not that many. No? Yeah. I don't know. Then we outsource all the productions to like every other country, but here I wouldn't. I wouldn't almost all of them, but not all of it. Except <laughs> food, food, food food's in here for the most part. Yeah, yeah. Food, food, electricity, or like energy. I mean, what we make a lot of our own food. I, a lot of our energy, though. Energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that's why. Like, it's those would I would assume be the two biggest ones. Yeah. So PPI came at. Producer price index came at 2.2. It was estimated 2.3, and the previous PPI report came out 2.6. So the inflation did go down as well for products. So for the most part, if P- we assumed from PPI, if that went down, we assumed CPI would come down as well. Just because if it's your per- if the the produce or the products you're purchasing have come come down. The amount of inflation there is just generally for them. It's affecting you has also dropped slightly. Yeah, they they're yeah PPI kind of a lead is a leading indicator for CPI because Correct. like what you said doesn't have cost to, the price of production. Yeah, doesn't have to hit on nail on the head every time. It could one could go up right, but for the most part, on average, CPI is what came out. Headline CPI came out actual two point nine, estimated it was three point oh. The prior was three. So that's, we did good there as well. And now for core CPI, estimated was 3.2, actual was 3.2, and the prior was 3.3. So we also saw a small decline there. Yeah, we, we shaved off a tenth of a percent. A tenth inflation. of a percent. And for the most part, the markets came down with this information. They shouldn't have. But they, I mean, I'm not saying they shouldn't have. For the most part, if the market's inflation is coming down, they expect rate cuts in the future. So we're not 100% sure why the market did pull back. I think wells are just offloading for the most part the last the last couple of green days we've had. I mean, to, to add to that, not just the whole like if if um, inflation, that's, I th- that's very evident right now in our current situation. If inflation is going down, then we expect rates cuts to go up, uh, to go well, rate cuts to take place. Yeah. Um, but additionally, with inf- lower inflation, that means then that people tend to have more disposable income. Mm-hmm. Therefore, stimu- should stimulate the economy one way or another and should generally be like bullish indicators. Also to add, a lot, a lot of smarter people than me are saying that whenever we have um, rate cuts, or like in this type of scenario, it typically means we're going into recession. This typically means that the market shouldn't go up; they should come down. 
because it's a recession indicator or like the prior times we've come off of um from higher rates than normal to low rates is because there is some sort of recession coming along or something like that i i am on the boat of you and of, of you of i think this is more bullish just because it also makes lending cheaper and there may be a lot of lending that happens that will push a lot of spending in terms and, and go to assets, not so much towards like garbage. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. yet to be seen. So I think I think what it is, it's which one came first, the chicken or the egg? Hmm, um, I don't know. I never got that one right. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so essentially, like, it would be signs of a recession because like, oh, if... In, if inflation is coming down and markets coming down, then we need a rate cut to stimulate spending, which is a sign like, yeah, but then, or is it the other way around? It's like, okay, um, are we cutting down? Uh, are we going to cut down the, the interest rates? And then therefore like markets should, should go up, but it's not going up. All right. So, if it's like you said it's like we said uh any cuts in in interest rates should stimulate spending um, but then seeing that the you know it's it's interesting uh, how the thought is so clear at first and then like as i start to explain it it's it gets a little bit more complicated for me <laughs> to explain it <laughs> yeah to explain it about the whole chicken and the egg thing because of that whole like is are we in a recession or not because in this specific economy like i feel like they're just expecting a, we're we're expecting a rate cut to take place yeah. but not because a recession is looming so the only thing that gets me upset about this whole recession thing is that we've been calling recession recession since they changed the definition of recession like three years ago and now everyone's back to oh we're going to recession there is no soft landing we're in a recession we've been in a recession Oh no, now we're going to start a recession. We're going to recession now. A recession is looming. Mm -hmm. I, I I currently feel I am in the camp of I think markets will do whatever the f they want to do. True that. They're not they're irrational or are they rational? I, at this point like <laughs> we're, we've been trying to predict they just, they or they've do. been trying to predict the market. The Nasdaq mm -hmm. the S&P all of these indicators are at all time highs or they were pretty much they've been breaking all time highs and now they just pulled back for the first time with this Japan carry trade. And we're now mm -hmm. pulling back heavy. Crypto or Bitcoin specifically ramped up crypto since March altcoins have died out. It's like, is this due to recession looming or is this just because the Bitcoin ETF came out a lot of money stimulated one way and there, it couldn't go anywhere else? We had meme coins take off that we didn't have other cycles. And it's just, I don't know. I think we're, we know, I think there is more information now than we had before. And I think we're more confused than we were before. <laughs> That's what I think. You couldn't have, you couldn't have put it any better, will you? <laughs> I think we're, we're, we are right now in a position where we have too many options and we don't know which one we're going to pick. We don't, we don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that sounds about accurate. Hot That's take: funny. We're like women at the store. We don't know what we want. We don't know. We don't know what we, we want. We don't know what we, we want. want. We're, we're not mission oriented. Are we in a recession? Do we? We're not. We're not mission oriented. We're. We're. I think like what's happening is we're still coming out of the flash bang that we got thrown up back in twenty twenty, and people are still like coming out of this haze because I think it's important to realize that like actual fiscal growth takes time, energy, and effort. Um, it do doesn't just happen out of out of like free will, like like not free will, but like in an instant. Um, unless you're the Fed, where you like print money, but then that's uh, what's it called? That's like fictitious. There was a word that I just had um in my head. Uh, like it's a bubble of sorts. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know the whole thing about like the the definition of a recession being changed a couple years ago i'm still like absolutely shocked about all that happened yeah uh, 
And it's been yeah, they've just been dragging it. They've been dragging out the pain as much as possible. And that's the only thing you can do. Yeah, of course. Which I want to move on to. I think we should mention these two last crypto topics. And then I want to move on to Elon Musk having Trump on and interviewing him. Well, not even an interview, okay. more of a conversation. Okay. So what are the two crypto Just because I want to I wanna bring this into the recession thing because mm-hmm. they because they mentioned it they didn't mention crypto but they did talk recession and government and all that fun stuff so i'm gonna bang out the two news articles real quick and i, I want your reaction ceo okay. of circle announces that tap to pay using usdc on iphones coming very soon and secondly metamask um metamask Habe launched a debit card in partnership with MasterCard. MasterCard has over 1.2 billion debit card users globally. Wow. They're going to try to onboard a lot of people. Um, I would say onboard and also uh, not mainstream, streamline crypto mm-hmm. usage. Yep, 100%. Definitely, for sure. Which I that's mean, good news. That's generally, generally that's, good news. Bro, everything um, that's coming out this year is really bullish if it like starts to be used and happen. Mm-hmm. Like if you can yeah, have the USDT only question and start using it on Solana and not ETH because I don't want to pay for transaction fees like that, but it'd be great. Yeah. The only question I got is in terms of like the whole Apple Pay for USDC. Mm-hmm. Um. How big of a cut is Apple getting, and how are they enforcing that? So I don't think it's an, I don't think it's enforcing. It's how big of a cut they're getting because I think it would be um connect your wallet to the Apple Pay system. Mm-hmm. And then you would have. So to then you gotta do two transactions. Why two? What What do you mean connect your wallet to the Apple Pay system? Like you're gonna your Apple wallet how will do just you, have a. How do you connect your your credit card to Apple Pay? in your information so Same. you give you give you give so you give apple your 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 keys no it's the same thing with bots like you know how you have um sniper bots mm-hmm. you're not creating you're not giving them your keys you're sending them over a certain amount of funds and that itself it's its own private it's a, it's its own wallet <clears throat> okay i see i see what you mean i would assume it would be like you're gonna so then in this case transactions off. would take place offline and then just taking it off would would then make it online um maybe because yeah because if my wallet uh if i send my like usdc to my apple wallet um then my apple wallet has a balance it's very likely gonna have its own wallet address and then whenever you're over complicating it payment, Oh, I, you're, I'm just asking. I know. I think it. you're overcomplicating. Like, think about like your credit card. Do you think about your credit card when you use it about what's on your credit card? About what's on my credit card? You you have your credit card on your phone, on Apple. Mm-hmm. You double touch mm-hmm. twice to pay with your phone. Mm-hmm. Same idea. Your wallet will just. I be, no no. Will just be connected. I to understand it. the. I understand the the front end aspect of how that works. I'm trying to figure out the back end aspect of how that works. Uh, so I Be- there because are, all mm-hmm. all all the Apple Pay is really doing is making a copy of the information that's on your credit card's near field communication. So like you know tap to pay for like your your credit card. You're missing something that you forgot about. USDC what? Circle is already implemented to um to cover transactions on chain. Like they already do that when, with with USDC. USDC does transactions on chain. On in Circle, Circle already does that. On what chain? On Sol. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there's not. I understand. There's no, like there's just so what I'm saying is, on there and on Circle's end, if you're using USDC, which is the on blockchain. You mm-hmm. pay. You would pay. I would assume. We're, we're guessing here because it's just announced like that they're working on this. Yeah, yeah. We don't know how how they're gonna end up working. So like, I, ass- I'm, I that's what I'm trying to figure out. So I would assume it's your, your phantom wallet. You connect it. 
I would also assume mm-hmm. you don't want to use your actual phantom wallet just in case, right? Assume you use a uh, a, a phantom wallet with two Solana in it. It's connected mm-hmm. there. It ha- it's enabled the the Circle USCC payment feature, right? Okay. You pay. Front end, mm-hmm. it looks the same as your as regular Apple Pay. On the back end, I would assume mm-hmm. since Circle already covers is already authorized to cover transactions in USDC on chain. They would send that money to that bank. Like at one point, it would be converted to actual dollars and pay them in dollars if that's what they want, or if they want it in USDC. But that would be on their end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, depend. Yeah, it, it, I think it does end up being uh, dependent on the payment processor. Yeah, because USDC uh, on like Circle, they already do that. Like they were already um, beta. Yeah, because the way out. I was thinking, the way I was thinking about it was the payment processor is just its own wallet or its own like Light Node or whatever. Then like when I connect my Apple Pay, like I triple click right. Uh, the phantom wallet card comes out and i just tap it it's just uh it's sending like a out the communication will be like uh the processor would send uh a request and then the the apple wallet would just send the funds but to that specific like wallet the node yeah therefore like that's why i was concerned like not concerned but just wondering curious yeah. about i mean that's one how way apple would charge it could fees. also possibly do it i think that's a more of a once if you're like your own business and you have your own like mm-hmm. crypto accepting service you can you would do that way but if you're yeah. a bigger company and you're going to use that service with them it would have to be they cleared up on their on the back end okay yeah 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 so i think uh that makes sense that that what you just said makes sense um the the terminal itself is probably owned by some entity and then like the actual functions of it's maintained by that entity yeah. in this case let's say circle so then circle would just charge whatever fees it needs to charge yeah i i say it depends on how they're doing it like i saw a video of this guy paying for coffee in the bronx through the lightning network or we, i think it was mm-hmm. a lightning network and it was just you know as regular lightning network it does but it, it he but the the information i believe came out of the actual like a reader and he just scanned the qr code and sent it over lightning network but paid in crypto well paid over the lightning network crypto. yeah It'll be the same idea, like a oh, similar idea. And then the other one was PayPal? No, it was MetaMask getting their own debit card. Oh, um, partnered okay. up. Metamask, um, yeah, it's yeah. MetaMask. Habe he launched a debit card in partnership with a MasterCard. Okay. Like, I don't. Yeah, like, that's huge. They're just that's launching a, a MetaMask. Uh, both, both of those will be absolutely massive. Yeah. And also, like, this is what we need to actually like this is something you'll get like i would get the usdc circle because it means mm-hmm. i don't have to hold cash i can hold some usdc on my on a wallet and be connected and i could also pay that way mm-hmm. i don't like metamask just because it's on eth if it was on soul even better i don't like ETH transaction fees i can't i can't wait for that to happen yeah i'm excited oh it's I'm excited for that bro i think we're getting more bullish news this cycle than we did last cycle yeah, definitely. And we're like just definitely. hovering at sixty plus. Last, the thing is with la- last cycle, it was still very experimental stuff. It was still too yeah. too ahead of its time. Well, um, I I was on a uh, on a Zoom today, not for for a different um thing. I'm subscribed. I'm subscribed. Another another group I'm in. Just but he was just giving. He's part of banter. And he was just giving his thoughts. And he said, like, he goes, I don't think he said this. I don't agree with this. He goes, I don't think crypto has crypto has a future. He goes, it's 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 just like a so much of a far fetched idea. It's like it's not necessary. Wow. Yeah, that's a hot take. That, super hot take. He goes, the only thing is I will hold on for like the like hold on for longer term, longer in a cycle is Bitcoin and ETH. And he goes, the only reason why I would hold on to them is because they have ETFs. If they didn't, I would believe they go to zero. Like, he didn't say they would go to zero. Crazy. Yeah. But I believe but he, most of its value. But I would assume that's what he was he would, he was implying. That if it didn't, it would go to zero. That's a crazy take. And I was just like, what? I'm like, you're really in an industry that you're just here to make money. 
and believe zero in any of the tech, zero. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's kind of crazy. I don't think he knows what he... Yeah, that, that is kind of crazy. Listen, he has no voice. He, has, he is hired by one of one big a, a really big team. He works for them. He is one of their researchers. He's in the industry. The fact that he doesn't believe in the tech of the industry is what I find crazy. Yeah, that is. I don't know. I'm still processing that one. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I was, I was like, processing he one. said that. I'm like, I don't know if I should take your, I, I don't know if I should trust you anymore. Yeah, I don't know what his take. Well, I don't know what, what his angle is on that. Wild angle, right? Like I would have never. Expected. The guy's a little shady. The guy's a little shady. From that sounds shady, doing. right? Like I don't know if I could trust someone who doesn't yeah. like believe in the industry you're, no, you're dealing in. No, definitely. Yeah, if you're in any industry working in it and you just gotta pay, like you're just trying to like make your money, I guess. Like. I guess, yeah. but like you gotta have some. I can't. Yeah, I can't. I wouldn't. I, I would look at you and be like, I don't trust anything you say. Reason why this? No matter mm -hmm. how good you are, at what you're doing, like he's a great mm -hmm. technical analyst. But I'm like, I don't care what you have to say. <laughs> like if you're not I mean, even telling me buy Bitcoin. Analysis. Yeah, that's a little weird. Like you're not even weird. like you're not even telling me to buy Bitcoin. You're just saying I would sell everything and just have a hundred percent USDC, like hold cash. That's crazy. I like literally said like I, he goes by the end of August. He said hold USDC. He goes. He said hold. Ca you. Listen, he goes by the end of August, September of next year, I will be in a hundred percent USDC, USD. And the guy doesn't believe in the tech. He's a freaking hypocrite. I was like, damn, though. I, I, I'm like, not me. That's hypocrisy. I'm That's not. hypocrisy. If you don't believe in the tech, you don't hold USDC. You get rid of it and get cash. Oh, no. I mean, cash. I said USD. I said USD. Oh, you said USDC. Well, you know, I meant USD. If I, if you didn't, if we could, we'll rewatch this. But I, I think I, I said USDC twice. And I said USD. Hold physical, like, okay. USD. Yeah, if it's, hold if it's it in cash, your bank account. cash, then yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then, then yeah, he definitely doesn't. He's not a hypocrite. No, no. He said hold it in your bank account. Okay. I was just kind of like, that's kind of wild. That's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, not me. Okay. But hey, man, do you, right? Facts. So then, uh, what was this whole Elon thing with? All right. With Trump. So the Hulk Trump thing, right? So Trump was interviewed by Elon on Mon on this past Monday. Monday, give a date. Monday the at twelve. Twelve. So before the before Monday afternoon, the EU sent Elon a giant, not giant, but a letter, like a four or five paragraph letter saying how he has to be responsible, make sure that um, that they're, he, they're not sharing any missing information, like a whole bunch of like censorship type of a ordeal like make sure you're not inciting violence make sure you're following our regulations if you're not going to follow our regulations you cannot share this um to the european like audience like a whole like thing beforehand like full-on censorship right so obviously no one elon didn't give a flying for this okay about that then when they go to record or when they go to stream on spaces Apparently, he, um, the space or X was under a DDoS attack. Mm -hmm. They were attacking the system, and he was un he, They were delayed for like an hour, forty five minutes. Oh wow, long time. Yeah, and then he goes. So the second option would be we're gonna limit the amount of listeners off the rip. Like we're not we're limiting the amount of listeners, and we'll make sure the recording is out right away, like unedited on anything. And then they were on after, with the whole thing. They were on for about two and a half hours, two hours. So until 11 o'clock at night. Going over all sorts of, pol of politics. Huh, interesting. Yeah. Two hour conversation between Elon Musk and Donald Trump. Yeah, and it wasn't an interview. It was definitely not an interview. It was a podcast of like two guys who just had one talk. Yeah. Two multi-billionaires who one of them is running for president and the other one who's like in multiple Congress things every now and then. Yeah. Like just having, just shooting the shit. Yeah. Two very important people. Respectfully. Influential for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. And 
they talked about everything. Trump talked about the nuclear, like the nuclear problems we're having in, in just the U.S. and like the threat of nuclear war and we're not using enough nuclear and that a whole bunch of different topics and how the main takeaway when they got into the debt crisis, right, was so this this is what Trump said. Why does she bark? I gave her bones so she doesn't bark and the dog barks, dog. I don't get it. Whatever. I excuse anyone for the barking. She's barking loud too. She is barking pretty loud. Yo. Like it's coming from the that's coming from the gut. Yo. Like she's she's feeling it today. <laughs> Just kick her out. Just kick her out. I, bro, I think it might be worse. I think she'll be louder. <laughs> <laughs> I think she'll be loud if we Let me back out. in. Let me back in. Yeah. So. <laughs> so Trump goes when they, when they, when he gets signed into office in 2016. The first thing is, is like, hey, we have, we need to refurbish or get two new Air Force Ones. Mm-hmm. Boeing comes up and goes, hey, it's gonna be 5.2 billion dollars. Jeez. Right. <laughs> okay. A metric shit ton of money for what it is, right? But Duh. whatever. It's the, you know, 737s is top of the line. You're going to get, like, you're the best of the best. Trump goes, I'm not paying that. He goes, we're not paying that. No. So it's too expensive. He goes, that's too expensive. Trump goes, that's too expensive for that plane. I'm not paying $5.2 billion. We're not doing that. Mm-hmm. Especially I, with Boeing. <laughs> wait. Two weeks pass by, give or take. Like he makes them wait. They come back, and the price is one point six billion dollars cheaper. He didn't do anything. What? He just made them wait, and he goes, "I'm not paying that. I'm not paying that. I'm not paying that." They drop the price one point mm-hmm. six billion, and he goes, "I'll do that." He's like, "Now, now we could get somewhere." <laughs> and the main thing that the Trump goes, the main takeaway is, is how he goes, "How do we go from?" government overspend overpaying for things and they're no and there being zero competition Mm -hmm. he goes the fact that we're not doing like good deals or trying to get good deals on things like that's an issue he go and boy and um when he first got signed in he go oh this is what obama said we could spend like when he did it and when he goes i'm not doing that because that's a shitty deal I, i didn't do that deal i'm not doing that and they drop the price and then one of the things Musk goes Musk says he goes yeah it's kind of hard to go bankrupt when your checks never bounce like the US government checks don't bounce like they always clear mm-hmm. like you're it's hard to like get good deals with when you can pay whatever price you want and Trump's point was like we can't be paying whatever price we have to actively be trying to get good prices there has to be actively competition we can't just be spending frugalously i think is the word i'm looking for uh f- frugalously i think sounds it sounds about right sounds about right but you just can't be spending like an idiot like you yeah be- because being fru- fr- being frugal means that you're not uh spending money so spending it frugal frugalously sounds like man frugalous. someone tell us if what yeah, we're saying is right or wrong but that was like one of the main takeaways was where it, and then Elon also says like there is no or Trump they both agree that there is no competition when the when co- things come to the U.S. and the we'll, and if something costs a dollar we're gonna spend three on it when we don't have mm-hmm. to we can get better deals and I thought yeah. that was a uh, there was a lot yeah to, the U.S. is a little spoiled the U.S. is definitely a little spoiled I'm not about spoiled um it's yeah, hundred percent with him. It's like we're the rich kids in the entire world. So like, oh, whatever price comes our way, yeah, sure, yeah, we spend it. We're not spoiled then. Why? I don't think we're the are we, we're the spoiled ones because we're paying whatever price. We're we're the spoiled ones I, because we're the no, paying, I, we're the ones getting screwed over because because the rest of the world knows that we have all the money, so but they're like the charging us world, whatever. That's not and the rest since, of the world. It's the U.S. Company. I know, no, that's that's just that's just within. The U.S. I think yeah. we're not the spoiled ones. I think we're the I think we're the rich parents giving our kids whatever we want. That might also be uh, synonymous, like 
situation. Like that might also fit in. I think we're the rich parents paying the kids whatever price we want. Like the kids come up and we're like, oh, we want this, and we're like, okay, here you go. Okay, here. And then um, another thing they talked about, or in that same note, was we don't just we don't have like they didn't bring up taxation. Well, they did. They're saying like, well, we just like where you have high taxes, whatever, whatever. But something I do, I think you agree on too, is like we're just overspending on everything. Whether it be mm-hmm. military, whether it be this, we're just overspending. So the one thing they did bring up is how we have thirty-five trillion dollars in debt, and how the next biggest expense, or the the next expense that will beat the military budget we have, is our debt payment. Our yeah. debt payment will be larger than our military budget. That's insane. That's not that's not sustainable. That happens, and then you have no no other option but to go to war. Because if you don't go to war, someone's gonna make you a slave. I don't know why we gotta and go to war for, but okay. William, because okay, with the amount of debt that the United States owes. Yeah, but we don't owe it just to like countries. I mean, a lot of it we of do. It is still like the majority of it. I'm, I'm sure a lot countries. of it we do. But I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm saying it's not all of it. So, so if. If we don't pay that debt, it's like what what do loan sharks do? They come around and they beat you up. Yeah, but that's why we had no one's this filed. Or they kill you. Because we're the biggest one. Because yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. If we don't fix this issue, our spending issue, we are forced to go to war. Or or we're forced to default on our debt. William. That might be an, an option. I'm no no that the, the correct thing to do for that we would do is default on our debt. If we're if the, And then what happens? We get to, we we have to go through some really large growing pains. Okay. Can you be a little bit more specific on what those are? I mean Peter Schiff talked about it and, and I think uh Rob Paul's also like we would default our debt and we would just have to restart from zero. Like that mm-hmm. wise we'll restart from zero. What, what I mean, it'll have a large economic effect, of course. You know, yeah, we will devalue yeah. everything we own, but yeah, it's but there's not there's it's we're not gonna do anything that's gonna be worth fixing it. We're gonna end up defaulting on this debt sooner or later, or going to war. <laughs> One of the two. I think I think defaulting that is a much better idea than going to war. Because going to war doesn't I mean, solve that problem. No, uh, it, no doesn't. it doesn't. So we'll have to default on it at some point. Mm-hmm. You can only push that can down the road so much. But um, not th- that was something they talked about. Another thing they talked about was getting a committee. Elon mentioned it. Getting a committee to oversee our spending. And Trump, yeah, that's super important. And Trump goes, oh, and I would want you to be the, the head of that committee since you're really good at cutting costs. <laughs> we talked about how good he is at cutting costs. He goes, you're really good at cutting costs. I would love to have you on the committee so you can cut our, cut our costs like you did. He Start didn't say cutting. it, but how he did with Twitter. Bro, if if Elon gets on that committee, uh, he'll pretty much be the next uh, Javier Millet. That's what he, and they also talked about Argentina. He goes, you're a really good friend with Javier Millet and how what he's, do, he's doing... Javier Mene is doing a MAGA approach and mixed Elon just getting rid of everything. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. But that's an interesting conversation. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to listen to it. It was just a conversation. I mean there's a lot of like just Trumpy things and of course. Yeah, I, I would imagine. And there was really was no pushback because it's not it's not meant like it was Elon Musk having a combo with another billionaire. He's like, I don't it's a convo. Mm-hmm. For sure. But there was a lot of fun takeaway. Not, I would say, interesting takeaways. Not fun, mm-hmm. and, uh, and not back and forth. But definitely, like, they did have some common ground. And even Trump and Elon made the point of, I was never a full-on th- Republican. I was a Democrat for many years until I realized the left was leaning way too left, and I was going. It was leaving me behind. Like it was leaving me out of it. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much what just happened. We'll see what happens. I just feel like that was fun to share. and Yeah, that was an interesting Lastly, uh, so poly markets, now it changes every day, but poly markets have um, Kamala winning. Yeah, I saw. Race. I actually have that open right now. She's at 53%. Yeah. 
we'll see what happens yep interesting times but this election uh, is gonna be a hell of a roller coaster from here on out i'm just glad i invested in bitcoin and uh prepare for the worst choose to like yeah yeah i only i i, I feel like i want to get involved because uh, i feel like i'm role playing to a degree no you're not you're anti you're anti uh taxes you want you would vote for the president who gives you zero taxes i would absolutely vote for that president so that means you're definitely not voting for Kamala who might implement crypto taxes, um, Bitcoin taxes. Yeah. Um, she could try getting it. <laughs> I was like, you'll never touch. I'm never paying. Yo, yo, you know what's crazy? What's um, uh, some type of uh, list got leaked from the FBI a while ago cool. about flags. It was a flag list. Mm-hmm. Were you and flag- the rating were you of like, are, are they friendly or are they not friendly? Are they terrorists? Are they, are they like uh, gotcha. organized crime organizations? And the the flag that says like "Don't try it on me" flag, and uh, some something that goes along, "Oh, if you want it, come and take it," like that phrase mm-hmm. I think was also part of it. Um, they they are labeled as like, um, what's it called? Uh, domestic Hostile. terrorist. Oh. Yeah, so like, if you say, "Oh, you want the gum? You want my guns? Come and take it." You're you're labeled as a domestic terrorist, which is crazy. I don't know how that. That's literally like the whole point of that whole Second Amendment thing. Yeah, I don't know how so, it would work, but come and take it, then pussies. Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was crazy. That's wild. That's all I got, yeah. though. Yeah, that's all I got too. Um, you say though, but like we've been we've been on it for like an hour and, and twenty. We've been on it for a minute, yeah. Well, close us out. Oh wait, yeah. Thank you guys for staking around for so long. Staking we got around, hundred two subscribers. Jesus. Sticking, sticking around. Ooh. I thought, I thought, I said it, and I thought it didn't come out that that bad. But um, sticking around for so long, we got hundred and two subscribers. So thank you for your support. A like share comment follow we are appreciative of all 102 of you exactly even though two of them are probably ourselves uh maybe <laughs> <laughs> it's been well, another week of your favorite crypto podcast sometimes crypto the unscripted crypto podcast hey <laughs>